Yes, sir. So, oh, uh, hold on for the mic, buddy. <laughs> regarding what you were saying about loving and respecting, so, you know, I think it's in Corinthians, it says, husbands, love your wives, right. as Christ loves the church. Yes. And then it says, wives, respect your husbands. So, um, there is supposed to be love in human relationships and respect. Right. And uh, thoughts, you know, it says, uh, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, what's the, I'm trying to remember where, what, what chapter or what, what it's in, but I know the thought, Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Uh, you said, well, no, I, know I know the plans that I, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, plans for good and not for evil. Right. To give you a future and a hope. So God has thoughts for us, so I think we should also have thoughts for, for ourselves and for each other. But he tell you not to take no thought for tomorrow. No thought for what you want, what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear. No thoughts. I'll take care of those things. And he will. And then when you love your wife, it's not you loving your wife. It's the love. You have overcome that fallen love, which is the nature of the devil, that emotional stuff that requires you to get love back when you love them. You have God's love, and you are loving your wife, and you, your body is the temple of God, and so he is in you, loving through you, so you are loving your wife the way that he loves you. But if you are loving her emotionally, you're loving her the way the devil loves, which requires that you got to love me back. you got to give me something to get it. But in him, there is nothing required. For, for, from the other person at all because you have it all. And then your wife, if she's working on herself too, she's going to love you because she's loving you with God's love as well. And she see that you're a son of God and she sees the love coming through you. And so it, you will have a marriage that will last until death do your part because neither one of you are trying to get anything from each other. It'll work. It'll be perfect. And he said, take no thoughts at all. But because human beings have identified with thoughts, someone mentioned kids, we identify with the thoughts when we were a kid, when our mother make us angry and turn us away. We identify with the thoughts. Uh, we think we are the thought because we grew up our whole life in our imagination. This is our, we escaped when we were traumatized by mama. And we escaped into thought trying to survive. But as an adult, we're responsible to come out by seeing that something's wrong. That make sense? What do you think about that? I'm, like I'm saying, you know, it's kind of, I'm trying to process what you're saying because, you know, it's kind of different. So I'm sorry? Trying, it's kind of different, so I'm trying to process what you're saying. And it's all in the Word. Read the New Testament. It's all there. It's all there. Remember when Paul said that the things I want to do that are good, I can't. And the things I don't want to do, I do. I figure it's not me, it's something else in me. He's talking about that. Sin made a home in the mind. His thoughts are not his own. Overcome thoughts is just an illusion. And you'll be able to deal with anything. Wars are started. Why do you think our governments start war, they're in their head. They want something, and they trying to get it by making up stuff, hating one another, and start a war, and then we have to pay the price for it. Let go of your illusion. But you got to work on yourself. You got to watch the illusion. And then God will put a bubble around you and protect you from the world. Yes, yeah, Sean. I was just going to say all those like lines we draw as far as, you know, respect or even like loneliness, you say, you say, okay, you know, after this point, you know, I might start feeling lonely. Like if I don't have this on this party on right. Friday night, then I'll start feeling lonely. Or, or if, if this person doesn't act a certain way, if they go past this point, I'm going to feel disrespected. Um, we don't make those either. We don't make those lines in our life. And it's just like a person who is, you know, quote unquote, uh, in a addiction. And they say, you know, on, on the first of this month, I'm going to stop, you know, like they don't make that either. And it never works out. It just makes it worse. Absolutely. So those are the things we don't, uh, make. 
okay. draw no lines. You don't need to do anything. Do nothing. Just live. Let go and live. Let go of your ideas and let go of your plans and let go of everything. And then they say your mother do crazy stuff. Don't fuss and don't yell at her. And take the pain of not yelling because that's the devil. That's the nature of the devil. He wants you to fight. Let go. But you got to watch those thoughts because the light of God that allow you to see the thought will destroy them. But you got to watch them. You got to see them through. You can't go unconscious when they come because unconscious is life unto the devil. He wants you unconscious. He hates you. And he wants to destroy you. And your real family are those who are truly, truly born again of the Spirit of God. Not the Bible thumpers, not the one quote the word, not the one that go to church, but those who are truly. The blood family is not your family. They're not special. They're not your family. That's why they don't get along. Because they hate one another. They're about self. And that's the nature of the devil. The nature of the devil is all ego and it's all about self. Because the example you gave, and then I want to take Joel first and then here. And I think that's what you uh, The nature of the devil is my brother treat me well. My dad is this for me. My dad is that. And so I really value them, right? But if you were not of your imagination, you would respect them anyway. Even if they were the words of the words, because you would know it's not them. It's truly not them. So you would neither value nor devalue them because you would have no thought about it. You wouldn't say, oh, I value my parents, or look at them, I devalue them. You would have no thoughts. There would be no up or no, no down, no up, no nothing. All right? Yes, Joe. Yeah, uh, I think what the man is saying, and I think that we can all relate or can't, it, it's happened to us before, is that the crazy thing in the setup is that Satan has imitated everything that's of God to make it seem like it's God. So thoughts, anger, the anger that God has and the thoughts that God has is not the same thoughts that we right. feel or the thoughts that we have because he imitated everything and he makes us believe, oh, well, the Bible says thoughts. The Bible says have anger. He read the word and the word said have thought, thoughts. So he's like, oh, okay, let me right. come up with some thoughts. So we believe, exactly. And they're not God's thoughts. Right. We identify with the wrong idea of what these words mean, so. That's a good point because you read the scripture and the scripture says, uh, be angry and sin not, but Satan's gonna tell you it means something else intellectually. He's going to tell you it means this. And then the preacher going to say, yeah, that's what it means, because the preacher ticked. The pope ticked. <laughs> <laughs> and so you were well, that's the pope. He's a preacher. He has a title. He must be right. And then now you walk around and say, well, I got human, human nature of hate. Uh-uh. That's not what God means. Not at all. Just think about it. God's not even judging us. He doesn't see us as center, sinners. He doesn't see us as good or bad, right or wrong, because he knows that something else is driving us. It's not even us. We're all, we've been bought and paid for. We, all of our sins have been wiped away. And what does Christian walk around and say, oh, I'm a sinner. I'm not perfect. I'm not this. They work along with the devil. Christ said, it's done. Your sins have been wiped away. That means you're not a sinner. If he had wanted you to stay a sinner, he would have left you in the Old Testament. You would still be living that. And that's what people in their heads are doing. They're living the Old Testament. They're living in hell. And they hate one another. They're jealous of one another. They're bite-biting with one another, revengeful, unforgiving, carrying on because they're in the Old Testament in their imagination. The devil has been defeated. He has no power. Christ said it's done. He went down and destroyed death. There's no death. But one death, and that's of the ego. That's the only death. 